Well, Mark, it's wonderful to, to be on the show. Uh, like you say, uh, we are both Santa Barbara residents. In fact, we live, we live just one street away we do. from one another. And, and it's wonderful to be chatting to the, uh, the TEDx uh, community. Um, I, I speak to uh, hundreds of thousands of people. In fact, over the last number of years, I think I've spoken to over a million people. Um, and, and I do two things when I talk, Mark. One is I just give a perspective. Um, on a life that's been lived with uh, with passion and purpose, um, a life that's been filled with success and failure and heartbreak, and how I've transitioned from the darkness to the light. So I just give a simple perspective. And then I give an amazing tool. Uh, it's called the Code Method. Um, over a million people have used it. And it's a simple way to um, activate purpose for a better life. Not for the best life, not to be like Steve Jobs or not to be like Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, but just to lead a better life. It's really simple. The focus is on activating purpose to be better and to help others be better. And that's what I've been doing since I lost my beautiful son um, in 2006. That was a, a life changing moment for me. I lost my son. He played a dangerous game he heard about at school, made a poor choice. We played a game that all the kids were playing with their school ties called the choking game. And, and since then, I've really been using this uh, simple method that I, I developed um, to help people make better choices, to activate purpose, and, and with young kids really to give them power to have uh, self-esteem and, and, and to be aware that, that choices have consequences. There, there was so much in that to unpack. Where I'd like to start, though, is with young, with young kids. I'm. We've had lots of discussions about early childhood education and early childhood guidance, and uh, it's a it's a passion for me, and I think for our audience as well to understand that. Knowing that um, you've taken the code which you developed. Um, in 2006, after uh, that tragedy in your life, which you spoke about in our in your 2010 TEDx American Riviera talk, which we've linked to uh, on the show on the show notes. At what age do you think a young person has the cognitive ability to understand the idea that they have a purpose on the planet? You know, this whole method and this code, um, it started with children. Hmm. It was inspired by children. Um, it started out um, with an environmental problem at one of the greatest surfing breaks in the world called Rincon. A friend had asked me to uh, help me help solve the problem. It was a $30 million problem. He said, you've got a $100 budget. Uh, <laughs> And he, I said, well, how, what can I do with a hundred dollar budget to solve such a big problem? He said, well, I'm bringing a group of children to the beach and I'm bringing down the local water board and the state officials, the government officials and the media. And he said, I think we can start with children. You give them something to empower them, give them something to create environmental consciousness. Um, so I went home that night and, and I thought like, what can I do? And I, I wrote 12 lines, every line beginning with our will. I wrote the fundamental lessons that surfing had taught me about life. I will always paddle back out. I'll, I will never turn my back on the ocean. Just simple, simple building blocks of our, our character and our purpose. Um, and I wrote them in the form of 12 commitments, 12 promises to myself. And then I, I printed them up on a little card. Uh, and I printed up 100 cards, cost me $100 and gave them to the children. And it just created a groundswell. The children loved them. The media loved them. Um, and then ultimately the problem got solved. The bond measure was raised, a number of environmental groups, Santa Barbara environmental groups, the Heal the Ocean, wonderful groups, got involved and, and, and they solved the problem. But the cards just kept on going. Um, and people would ask me for more and more cards. And I started speaking at leadership groups about a concept of a code. People were fascinated with values and they were fascinated with commitment. So I'd start started to speak to very big groups. And I wasn't, this was something I just sort of fell into. And then ultimately it led to a book and the book became popular. And then, and then I lost my beautiful, beautiful son. 
and it was a, a couple of years of real devastation for us. But then I started speaking at schools. Schools would phone me up and ask me, would you like to come and speak at my school? And one of the first schools was a little school in, in Santa Barbara called Anna Kappa School. It only has 80 students. Um, and I met the headmaster in the water at Rincon, the break that had the environmental problem. And he said, come and speak to my students. And I was chatting to the students. And I just had an idea while I was chatting with them. I, I said, surface code's my code. I, I'm, I wrote it, 12 lines. 15 minutes, 105 words, every line beginning with I will. What about all of you doing the same exercise? Mm. Spend 15 to 20 minutes on it. Do it quickly, stream of consciousness, write 12 lines, every line beginning with I will, and then send it to me. And I said to the headmaster too, his name was Gordon Sichi. Gordon, is it cool that I give your kids an assignment? <laughs> and he said, that's great. So about a week later, I got nearly a thousand lines of code back, 12 kids, 80 kids, 12 lines. 960 lines of code. Now you must remember I'd lost my boy. And the very, very, the very first line of code I got back was from a 13 year old girl. Her name was Elena El Sarah. And she said, I will always be myself. Mm -hmm. mm. And those words were so profound that this young girl wasn't going to be pushed around. She wasn't going to be bullied because certainly I believe there was an element of peer pressure in, in this game that my son played. But this young girl was putting her flag in the sand and was so determined to follow her own path. Um, and then all the other kids wrote such beautiful lines. Um, you know, I will, I will not do what others want me to do mm. simply to please others. I will live a moral life. I will respect my parents. Uh, just beautiful lines. So I got so inspired, I immediately phoned up my co-author, Patrick Moses. I said, Patrick, we've got to write another book. <laughs> and we wrote another book called The Code, The Power of I Will. And, and the book was a framework for positive choices amongst young people. So I know, I know it's a long winded answer to your question, but kids have this awareness at 13 years old. Um, I, I generally only speak to teens because I, I address issues about drugs and death. Um, and then I got so, so sort of fascinated by this whole subject of choice and empowerment and purpose that I went back to grad school. I mean, I was the oldest dude at grad school. <laughs> I was older than the oldest professor, I think. And I studied leadership. I studied the art and science of influence and inspiration because I needed to get some, some scientific background behind what I talk about. And it's fascinating. And you know, your listeners don't know this, and no one in America knows that. But the fundamental social problem that we are faced with is poor choice. Mm -hmm. One million Americans die every year, preventable deaths, preventable deaths, one million Americans die every year out of the two and a half million deaths are caused by poor choices, poor choices regarding diet, dope, alcohol, suicide, gang activity, homicide. Um, but it's a choice. Mm. It's an amazing paper by a guy called Rolf Keeney, a professor at Duke, who analyzed the CDC data. And my beautiful son, my 15 and a half year old son, my wife, uh, our son was part of that dreadful statistic. So a million people every year, that's more people than have been killed in the sum of every American death in every war that's been fought since the War of Independence. So it's a dreadful statistic. Um, and I like to think that when I do my presentations, when I do my workshops, show people how to activate purpose, you know what I do? I give them hope. Mm. And that's my mission now. If I can give one person hope in, in, in a, at each conference I go to, it, it, it means that um, my mission has been fulfilled. It is around this time of year that we we reflect a lot of us reflect on this past year what what's what's gone well what's gone wrong what needs work uh and we we because we have this time right we have a little bit of time in between the holidays and i think it's uh incumbent upon us to do that and then we we try to think okay what's my next year going to look like and 
it that's why I thought this talk was so important to connect people to their purpose because I don't I think we're so busy leading our lives and running and doing and serving and all of that stuff that we don't stop for a second to do that to take time so what would you encourage the audience to do is it to sit down and do what the 13 year olds did i would love the audience to do it i mean i work now with the largest corporations in the entire world i work with the biggest fastest growing hottest companies on the planet i worked with a company a couple of months ago they said we're the fastest growing company in the history of the world you know an ai data company mm. and everyone writes their code if you're a ceo and you've got fifty thousand employees you write your code mm. um but but what's a great way to do it for the listeners is you get together with your family grouping with your spouse your children everyone busts out a sheet of paper and you spend 15 minutes this code is open source code, so people can use it in any way, shape, or form they want. Everyone together writes it 12 lines. Every line beginning with our will. 15 minute exercise. And then it's a very it's a great process of, of inspiration, visualization, introspection, and commitment. But the second process, once you've written it, is then you have to publish it. Then you uh. have to you have to articulate it. So each person stands up uh, and you read your code. It takes uh, one minute. Yeah, yeah. So each family member, husband, wife, child, stands up and reads their code. And it is an amazing connective process. So what this process does, and you know, we, we, we have studied it, um, it creates accountability. Mm. Because when you make your statement, I will be a better dad, in front mm. of your family unit, mm. you will be mm. a better dad. That's powerful. So it increases the motivation and accountability, but then it also increases interpersonal engagement. And there's a realization that all of us are unified and all of us have the same life mission and purpose, essentially, which is every line of code can be divided into two categories. One is I will be better. And the second is, I will help others be better. That's essentially a life mission. And I've just observed over the millions of lines of code I've read. Sure. That's what we all want to do. So it creates this connectivity mark. And a fundamental problem in the United States today is division. Mm -hmm. You have Republicans on one side of the valley, you have Democrats on the other, and you have this big black chasm in between. You know what I'd love to do? I would love to get 435 congressmen 100 senators and every single one of them writing their code 12 lines every line beginning with our will and publishing it and they would realize that they are bound by common values and the political bs just gets in the way we all have these same values we all have the same mission we want to be better we want to help others be better so it creates great clarity this emotional engagement creates clarity there is something that you just reminded me of from a 20 years ago a conversation we had with chris anderson who was the head of ted and we had um as a project for ted we had created this algorithm that connected all the people that went to the ted conference this is before ted talks were online this is when there were eight or 900 of us that would go to Monterey and he had just bought the conference and he said he was looking for a way to connect people. And we looked at all of the things that were out there. There wasn't a lot. This is before LinkedIn, before Facebook and all of that. And we, we made a bunch of suggestions and he, he just looked and he said, you know, what's most important and what will last longer well beyond the four days that we're here in Monterey is if we connect everybody to each other's values oh, and that was at the core 20 years ago yeah. where we said let me find other people to your point who are looking to be better or let me find other people who are looking to help others be better and then all the specific kinds of things and it, it's interesting to hear you say this and I, and I have a question because in you you talked about the code in in 2010 at our, at our TEDx and you now 
but you know, it's it's 12 years later, you've had millions of lines of code. Uh, as a final question here, what has surprised you the most during this last 12 years? You know, what surprised me is that transformation can happen really quickly. Oh. So through COVID, I've asked people when I start my presentations, send me one word that describes how you're feeling and I form an instantaneous word cloud. So through COVID, I, I worked with a couple of hundred thousand people. So the four words have been stress, anxiety, depression, and disconnection. I call it a sad mindset. So that's the starting point of my discussion. That's been the starting point mm -hmm. of the American mindset, the American mm -hmm. business mindset, stress, anxiety, depression, disconnection. So then I give my perspective. I talk about commitment. I talk about connectivity and I talk about perseverance. And then everyone writes their code. And then I ask them to share one line. This is all online. I ask them to share one line that's about being better. And, you know, the lines will come through. I'll be a lifelong learner. I'll, I will um, be a better husband. I'll be a better father. Um, just beautiful lines. And then I say, send me another line from your 12 about helping others be better. And it will be, I will be a mentor. I will lift others up when they're down. I will be a better team player. And then I ask people, so what are you going to take home with you? Mm. Send me one word that describes what you're going to take away with you. And you know what the most common word has been? Hope. Wow. So how cool is that? So wow. you start yeah. with stress, anxiety, depression, disconnection. You move to being better and finding your purpose. And you end up with hope. Because I will. It's not about yesterday. It's not about today. It's about tomorrow. Two words of hope. And that's the mission, Mark. Finding John, hope, that is uh, creating purpose. A, a, a perfect bookend to that. I, uh, I hope people that are listening stop, stop the video and do this exercise to write very quickly, stream of consciousness, 12 lines, I will, and then share it with someone. Sean, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. It's been awesome.